Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Lauren from Lauren and the Books. And today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up talking about the books that I read in December. I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books in December. Pretty good going, it was a very busy month so I did well to do all that. So I'm going to get straight into it. So the first book I read, I've forgotten who it was by, was called, it was by Karen Swan and it was called Christmas at Tiffany's. Now I hated this book, I hated everything about it, I hated the weak characters in it, I hated the fact that this woman was treated like a doll by her friends, just went to a different... So basically the premise of the story is, although you would have heard this a million times because it's like every chick lit book ever, is that this woman breaks up with her husband and then goes, bye dear, bye. I'm going to do the shopping. Um, and then having broken up with her husband, then goes to spend um, six months in a different... Um, city with her best friends in order to get over him and in each of these six cities she meets a man and in each of these six cities she has another hairdo done and in each of these six cities she has in each of these it's not even six cities in each of these cities she fight she discovers something about herself and it was just dross basically I persevered because it had been recommended to me by somebody and I wanted to persevere with it but I didn't like it it's called Christmas and Tiffany's there's not much Christmas in it that was another reason I persevered I thought oh it'll be a Christmas book I'll persevere not much Christmas in that at all. Alas, one star. The next book I read, though, was Skipping Christmas by John Grisham, which is a book that I have read before by John Grisham. Um, he, it is a story of two, um, a couple, uh, Nora and Luther Crank, uh, and their daughter goes away for Christmas to volunteer in Peru, I think it is. Um, so they decide that they're not going to bother with Christmas. They spent $6,000 on it last year. They're not going to bother with Christmas. They are going to... Um, they are going to instead go on a cruise on Christmas Day. So they decide to sack off Christmas, basically. No decorations, no money spending, no charitable giving. And it's just the trials and tribulations and the lulls that they get up to during this time. Um, I like this. It, it's fun. It was, um, it was a really quick read. It was like 200 pages, very big font. Um, sort of went through it very quickly. It's also a film, uh, Christmas with the Cranks, which you may have seen. I've never seen that. Um, and yeah, I gave it I gave it three stars. Um, it's, it's okay. Like, it wasn't the best Christmas book I've ever read, but it was fun and anything was better than that shit I read the first time around. The next book I read was uh, Let It Snow by John Green, Maureen Johnson and Lauren Miracle. Again, another book that I'd already read. Um, it is a collection of three interconnecting short stories um, to do set around Christmas in a place called Gracetown. Um, they're, they're YA, um, YA so, uh, sorry, so nothing too deep in there, but very fun. Uh, the first one's about, uh, called the Jubilee Express, it's about a girl called Jubilee whose um, parents get arrested um, whilst shopping for miniature, um, something miniature for their railway or something like that. So she has to go and spend Christmas with her grandma in Florida uh, and on the way the train derails and she ends up spending it in a place called Gracetown which she's never been with, uh, with a boy that she's never met before. Um, that was quite fun. And then A, a Cheer-Tastic Christmas Miracle is um, all about uh, a... a at this uh, pancake house, which is where, near where the train derails. They all interconnect very slightly. Um, and yeah, it's about cheer, cheerleaders there and a, a man who, a, a boy who works there ringing his three friends saying, get here, bring Twister, there's cheerleaders here. And it's about their journey there. And then the last one's called The Patron Saint of Pigs. And that is about um, a girl who has only really thought about herself in the past and sort of has to start thinking about others. So. Nice little bit of meaning, good fun. Um, I re reread this last Christmas. It's probably something I reread every year. I, I read them. I said to myself last year that I was going to read them in a different order this year because I wonder how I'll find reading them in a different order. But I forgot. So next year, I think if I do reread that, I will. Um, I'm going to read them in a different order. And it's a beautiful cover. I mean, look at that. They're sad talking about Christmas books now. Christmas is over. The next one I read was for my book club at work, and that was Maeve Binchy. This year it will be different. Again, a series of interconnecting short, uh, so a series of short stories, not interconnecting this time. Um, very fun. You all know how much I love Maeve Binchy. Um, the last Maeve Binchy I read was Tara Road, which was massive and could have been cut down by about 200 pages. So it was quite fun to revisit some Maeve Binchy short stories um, and then only be sort of like 20 to 30 pages long, sometimes even less. Um, really lovely, really enjoyable. I haven't really got a bad word to say about Maeve Binchy, so um, just really enjoyed it and everybody at Book Club enjoyed it. And um, bit of Christmas, bit of New Year, lovely. 
The next book is the best book that I read of the month. Again, it is short stories, loads of short stories this month. It is Rachel Joyce, A Snow Garden and Other Stories. Um, this is a beautiful little hardback. Look at this, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, a, it's a slightly smaller than a normal um, hardback, so it's very fun. And um, yeah, th there is seven interconnecting short stories here. And what I found that made this a four star book compared to the three star book of Let It Snow is that the characters just seem much more real. I don't know if it's because it's set in the UK and they're set in the US and obviously cultural differences, but I really, um, I really love this. I really, really enjoyed it. I, um, I found it really, like when I, when I read the interconnecting bits, I really felt like I was in on like a little secret or something. It was very, very cute. So there's certain bits where, so one of the stories is a, a, um, a dad who's having his two boys to come to stay for Christmas for the first year. And um, it doesn't go very well, but then towards the end they start getting on with each other. And they go out for a Chinese takeaway one night and um, the dad says, oh, it's really good. And like they, they were able to relax around each other and have a few laughs and things. And in one of the other stories, um, a character is driving past the Chinese takeaway and says he sees this dad and his two sons having the best time ever in this time and it just and it's all the, the interlinking is really touching and nice um rather than just sort of like the, the the small things that are interlinking in let it snow um this i absolutely love my favorite story was probably the the, the title story a snow garden um and I also like Christmas Day at the airport, which is a really fun one about um, a lady who goes into labour at the airport. Um, but yeah, this was just really, really lovely. And this is definitely going to be one that I'm going to reread next year. And I would urge other people to do so. Um, yeah, I really, really loved it. And um, yeah, looking forward to rereading it again next year. Four stars. <clears throat> The next book, you might notice there are all Christmassy books. I've, I really tried hard to read all Christmassy books in December. The next book I read was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Tobosky. This is a book, again, that I've read in the past. It is not a Christmas book, but there is quite a, a significant bit set at Christmas. Um, and also Charlie, the main character, his birthday is at Christmas and something awful happened to him on Christmas Eve. So um, that <clears throat> that's how, that's the link, basically. Um, this is... Wonderful. I absolutely love this book. It is my favourite book ever, probably. Not ever, but it, it, I absolutely love this book. Um, it is set out as um, Charlie, who has sort of mental health difficulties. You don't really find out um, the extent of these until the end, so I don't want to go into any spoilers. Um, but he is writing anonymous letters to um, somebody who was a friend. You never find out who that friend is, but he's um, telling about his school year and his friends that he's making and the troubles he's having at home and the troubles his sister's having with her boyfriend. And <clears throat> yeah, you just get a real insight into somebody's life. So he, um, he, he makes friends with two people, a stepbrother and sister called um, Sam and Patrick and he just absolutely falls in love with both of them, Sam in a romantic way um, and Patrick in like a friendship way that he would do anything for these people and it's just really really lovely, it's got some really good messages in there and I want to watch the film now <laughs> because I've seen the film before and I think they do a really good job of it, I really enjoy the film a bit so um, looking forward to watching that, I actually got it for Christmas the film. I read was a non-Christmas book, it's a very very small book and it's a book that um, David's sister got me for Christmas and it is The Teenager He Came to Tea, a parody by Josie Lloyd and Emily Reese. So this is a parody of uh, The Tiger That Came to Tea and it's really fun, um, it's written, they've got some really funny bits in here, I'm going to read you a bit out for you. Um, it's sort of like, it, it's a very good parody on, on like, what teenagers like and what home life's like and things like that. I'm just going to find a bit here. His stomach was still growling, so Sophie's daddy offered him a bag of quinoa rocket and heritage tomato salad. But the teenager ignored him. He was too busy crying with laughter, watching an epic fail of a kitten falling off a curtain. Sophie's daddy said, would you like a glass of organic lactose-free soya milk? But the teenager had already helped himself to a bottle of Diet Coke and went into the garden and jammed ten Mentos into it before filming it bouncing over the neighbour's roof and posting the footage on Vine. So it's really funny. The, the, um, the illustrations are really cool because they're re they really are like the tiger that came to tea, obviously, without being too much of a rip-off. But yeah, this was really fun. It didn't take me long to read at all, obviously, but I wanted to include it just because I had loved it. And the last book I read was a bit of a surprise to me, actually. It's a very, very good book. I, um, 
Uh, one, one day at work, I'd left my reading book, I think I was, and nobody would tell them what's been happening on, um, and, and nobody will tell them what's been going on, and then so you follow their story, which is Christy and Joe's story, and then you go back one year and follow Amber and Jeremy's story, and Amber and Jeremy are the people that used to live in this house beforehand, and it turns out that Amber um, has been having an affair. Um, that's, that's not a spoiler, that, that happens quite early on, and then as you go throughout the book, which is quite lengthy, um, it really builds with what, what this thing, what is this thing that everyone's been, been keeping secret, and it was really suspenseful, and I, I picked it up thinking it was just going to be a sort of like easy read, but there were some really well written bits in here, and like good description, I think one of the, one of the characters, one of the mums in the street looks like a Quentin Blake character, who's the illustrator who did all the illustrations for um, Roald Dahl books and now does the David Williams books, and I just thought that was a really great way to explain someone's hairdo. Um, and yeah, it was, there was a lot of confusion at the beginning between, because the, um, the, the two stories run so parallel, um, that the two new couples moving into this house, even though they're a year apart, um, but it, it made, it built more suspense, because I was confused, and I was sort of like, oh, who said this, and then, and, and it was just really good, I was really, really impressed with it and um, really enjoyed it. wasn't as quite as good as um, the the Snow Garden, which also I think comes in the Christmas spirit a bit. But yeah, really love this. Very very surprised by it. Um, I'm going to be lending it out to a few people and seeing if anybody anybody fancies a read. But yeah, lovely spine. Look at that as well, copper. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books that I read in December. As I said, out of them, my favourite was Rachel Joyce's A Snow Garden. Um, pretty good going for December reading, considering I was so super, super busy. Um, but looking forward to a whole new year of reading in January, and I will see you then. Bye!